Naptime Riot, Rain Cloud and myself are in the process of an enormous gravity journey as we attempt to undertake a circumnavigation of the planet Microtac. And so far we've pushed on to good weather and bad, mountains, ice lakes, forests and plains. Starting in the deep snow of New Babbage, we travelled out southwest at first, before turning at Calhoun Pass Emergency Shelter and proceeding west through Shubin Mining Facility 18 and on another thousand kilometres to Shubin Mining Facility 10 bringing the total distance travelled to about 2200 kilometers. The third stage of this journey is a very short hop, only 328 kilometers to Shubin Mining Facility 13. And because of this, I was expecting an easy and relaxing dash that would be over in around two hours. The day would prove me wrong in that regard, and for the first time in the trip I would be completing a stage entirely alone on the ground, with only a support pilot, Sphinx 40, joining me for the trip. It was a morning of blustering weather at the mining facility, as I prepared to set off. You read me, 251. Sphinx hadn't yet arrived and was not yet on the radio, but not wanting to waste daylight I fired up the bike, ready to start moving. Hey, welcome. <laughs> so, I am currently at Shubin Mining SMO 10 and I'm heading to 13. I'm going to send you a party in right now. The terrain on Shubin 10 was nice and easy to start the day. The weather was bad, but rolling hills dotted with sparse trees is comfortable riding ground. It wasn't long before I could spot the first mountain of many to come on day six. Okay. So you know, I have started a long journey a little, but like progress has been quite slow through the mountains here, so you should never trouble catching up. One of the things we've learned on this trip is that jumping in mountainous terrain is a much, much faster way to clear them, but you've got to take extra precautions on your landings to make sure you don't accumulate damage as you go. It had been a steady opening 50 kilometers with only one very minor dig in, but nonetheless, I wanted to check my status ahead of Sphinx arrival. Okay, I'm just gonna hold up and do a quick distance check and a bike check. damage to one of the retro thrusters, I kind of had a mild, very mild kind of dig in. Do you need to bring anything with me? Like food or water or something like that? So I was into the mountains once again, and with Sphinx on the radio making prep, the discussion of ship choice naturally came up. Do you know, right, I never used to like freelancers, but since Fingers has made us use this quite a few times, it's grown on me a lot. When the train did open up a bit, I was treated to maybe the worst visibility of the entire trip so far. Like honestly the weather is so bad right now, the visibility, it's almost like white out, you know, like when you can't see anything but white. Yeah, yeah. you kind of just kind of follow your compass bearing and just hope for the best. <laughs> I think I see an ice lake coming up though, that'll speed things up a lot. Maybe it isn't, I don't know, it's hard to tell from here. But the cloud shadows, like from a distance, they can look an awful lot like ice lakes. Weather is clearing though, thank God. Small blessings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When they're now clear, I was able to make good speed again. I'd be in for a mild surprise though as I traversed the mountains. Wait a minute, I hear engines. Is that you? I doubt it. 
Wait, is that you or is that not you? It's not me. Oh, okay, there's someone else here then. This is interesting. Uh, viral set Discord set the I think he might have gotten your uh, ping from you when he was doing the VHR VHRT in that moment. Oh, I see, okay. Well, I mean, you know, they're more than welcome to, to tag along. The ship overhead was another member of Skunkworks who had picked up my bike while killing a bounty target in atmosphere. The Gravlev bikes do have a frankly ridiculously high IR signature after all. I proceeded on, jumping from mountain to mountain, but unfortunately for me, the clear weather would not last today. Weather's closing in again. Blind jumps are always very dangerous. They make good time, but especially when landing in trees, even with precautions like slowing down in flight, you are taking a risk. And hard landings will cost you. I'm going to do a quick bit uh, distance check and bike check again. Gravlev 6 is gone. Retro is gone. Lost one Gravlev and one Retro. Put down the wind. Is making it real tricky to climb banks right now. Found some relatively flat terrain, I'm kind of snow blind still, but it is more open. Oh no, forest is coming up there. We're in like mid, late, we're in early afternoon, I'd say, which means that weather, well, microtech weather seems to be good in the mornings, bad in the afternoons. So we can look forward to some bad weather. We go ahead. The terrain so far had been back and forth between open areas with light forest and mountain ranges. Weather was unpredictable, but we were still making good time at this point. And as I began crossing another section of mountains, I heard engines for the second time today. Is that you this time? I just heard engines overhead. Ah, yeah, there's me. Too. Hey, welcome. There's a nice thing near the side of this mountain range. Yeah, okay, I'm on my way. Which direction is that from me? That is south. Yeah, that's broadly close to the direction we want to be going. Okay, excellent. Okay, I think I see it. I think I see it. I may have actually skipped it by mistake. I may have come like a difficult way around it instead of going through it. Yeah, you could have gotten to it easier if you'd have gone to the left of the mountains and tried going through. Yeah. This is the thing that was like without someone scouting, you just never know, you know? Like, yeah, look at that. That would have been, well, kind of on a kind of on path, yeah. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, like, I get to use it, like a little bit of it at least. It does make a difference. Can you see if it, like, does it extend around southwest at all? I'm gonna go around this. Uh, let me go a bit higher and I'll see if I can find out. Okay. Sometimes they, they like chains of ice lakes. There were a few more ice lakes, but all of them very small. I got a little, like another little ice lake right here. Very small, but you know, still nice. <laughs> Weather closes in, visibility gets extremely bad. It's open ground anyway, I've got open ground right now. I've got trees on the hills ahead though. Roger. I'm just gonna pick my way through it. I think I, I can see like a 
path. It's not the fastest path, but it's pretty good. If you follow the trees in front of the trees round to the south, there's, as you said, there is like a... Yeah. Soon I'd be ascending through very dense forests, and this would prove to be a feature of this range. Coupled with the weather, there would be a few more front impacts on the way. Okay, I'm, I'm still climbing. I've kind of like zigzagged through, and I'm on a ridge. Looks relatively clear. There's a few trees, like I'm going to have to dip down in a second in some trees, but beyond it looks like kind of clear ridge line. Can't see very far ahead, but right now at least the ground is kind of clear, so I mean it's... Oof, managed to thread, just managed to thread those trees back onto some more clear ground. We're descending quite a bit again, we may be heading towards more ice lakes maybe. And by now I can tell pretty quickly when there is something wrong with my retro thrusters. Okay, I'm going to kill some speed because my, I think my brakes are damn near almost gone. So I've got to, just, I've got to take this nice and slow. The bike moves sensibly fast. I keep thinking you're behind me and I don't run around from the ice. You've gone off past me. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, the bikes, like, they, do, they do move quickly. And also, like, I think it's because as you build experience, you kind of get better at spotting routes through and keep the speed up a bit more. And... Oh, the weather's clearing. Damn, look at that view. Lots of trees. I can't kind of afford to take my concentration off of riding, but it's a nice view. The view was breathtaking, but there were a surprising number of trees for a mountainside, and navigating them without brakes would be a challenge when descending. I'm having to kind of like do um like turn and burn maneuvers to slow down quite a bit just because we're going downhill right now and I right now I have essentially no <laughs> no brakes so I've got to kind of not let speed build up too much. Okay, that's good. Bonus. We're about we're about halfway then. This is great. God damn, these mountains, all of these mountains are covered in trees. It'll be... I mean, up going uphill is actually better, funnily enough, just because without brakes you can still slow down. Coming down the other side of this thing, though, that's going to be interesting. Can you get a look ahead? Right, the, the peak that I'm climbing right now um, goes up to, like, a ridge, um, and then beyond that, what does it look like? What's, what does the descent look like? Okay, I'm about to get eyes on the... Oh, there's a ridge. Maybe I can follow the ridge. Avoid all of these... Most of these trees. It's a mountain chain, rather. It's not really a ridge. The views, though, wow. It's all covered in trees. Most of the time when you hit mountains, they are, like, treeless, or the tops of them are treeless. This is the most tree-covered mountain range I've seen so far. As long as we're moving forward, we're making progress. Where my ship currently is, it's about as barren as this mountain there ain't seems to be. Oh, oh. Oh, bikes upside down. Uh, that was... I, I'm going to stop and do a distance and bike check real quick. Both retros are gone, yeah. Both retros are gone. This would be like such an ideal point for a spare bike, but I know that you don't have a um, Dragonfly D. No, I don't. It's okay. It's okay. We can. We can. I'll just be very, very careful with the speed, but I'm sure we can still make it through. There was a gully that slid between the peaks and was only sparsely populated with trees. We were still climbing though, and I knew at some point would come a descent. Got a nice kind of gully between the peaks here. There are trees, but they're sparse enough to thread through. About to come over another ridge with no visibility, so I'm going to see what the other side looks like. And, oh, listen, this, you know what, this gully stretches on quite a way. We might be okay. It'd be good
good to know what, what happens beyond the mountain you're over right now. What happens to the other side of that? Uh, there's a nice drop, um, and a couple of gullies. Um, there's a tree section, I think, maybe another lake. I'm gonna have a, have a look. Okay, yeah, yeah, another lake would be amazing. Okay, I'm not sure it's a lake, but it's a big area of um, open, excellent, sparse bit of trees. I'll take it, you know. <laughs> Because uh, this right now has been slow going. I mean, again, progress is being made. Views are incredible. Progress is being made, but oh my god, is it slow going? Oh, I actually got a view from here. I, oh, I see the area you mean. Yeah, okay, I'm a couple, couple of kilometers away. Descending though is very difficult without brakes because a lot of blind drops picking up speed constantly. Goddamn. The descent was made much easier by the shallow angle of this long ridge that was pointing in exactly the direction we were going. Though a drop to the low ground would need to come. Okay, I'm almost, I'm almost there, I think. I've, I've got down the worst bit. Oh, look at that, yeah, it's definitely open. Definitely open terrain. I'm almost there. Yeah, this looks real open. Wow. Oh, wow, this is so nice compared to what we've just been through. Finding flat ground was a godsend. We'd lost a lot of daylight, taking things slow in the mountains, but brakes are much less of a concern on open ground. This is Ice Lake right here, like, okay, I'm gonna kill on the other side of this, but this is Ice Lake right now. What I'm on right now is Ice Lake. And I've left it now, but maybe it carries on. Yeah, this is Ice Lake. It doesn't go particularly far, but the ground looks low ahead too. It would end though, and we tried to cling to it as much as we could. I'm looking ahead, beyond the ice lake, and it looks like a lot of trees. What if, what if we follow this to the, the I'm west? Take this path round to the right. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll take that route. Yeah. But after just a few kilometers, we were met with forest on all sides. It does extend some, but then where you need to go after that is trees. Yeah, I'm gonna, I think I'm just gonna have to bite the bullet and commit to the trees right now. So it was back to the slow going in another super dense forest. This is very thick forest, so I'm having to go at like 40 meters a second, which is not, it's, you know, it's very slow, but should be doable, just about. <laughs> we've probably done, we've probably already done like 100 kilometers since we lost the brakes. You've got about 115 kilometers to shoot in mining. Roger, okay, that's basically the door step, right? From where I am, you've got mountains, multiple mountains. Okay. So I'm just checking where you are so I can work out where to send you. Roger. The forest stretched on for miles, with the only consolation being that the weather was clear. There were pockets of open space though, but building at much speed without brakes can be very risky. I'm finding, a good, I'm finding good lines right now. Um, it, I, I don't think it, it will last based on the trees ahead, but um, speed has improved a little. I think if you head towards, if you head directly to 
where I am. That's your best route from where you are to me, I think. Um, and then... From me... Oof. Wow, that's a view. And once again, drop descents build speed as you fall that this bike could not counter. <laughs> oh. The best I could do was try to land in clear spots on upslopes and try to counter the speed of the geometry. Had a few close calls to the drones, but I have continued on, and I can see flat ground coming up. Like it's, it's the night; it's a nightmare to get to. Like it's going to be real horrible getting down through whatever it's go through. But but I think I can get to the flat ground. I think, and I can meet you there. It's hard to convey what this is like in a video. The speed is always slowly rising as you descend. Hitting rising gradients helps, but without some kind of speed killing maneuver, eventually you will hit something. I've landed at the stupid thing. Excellent. Um, what is your distance to me now, by the way? Do you know? Can you see, can you see my marker? 89.7 kilometers. Wow. Oof, okay. I did broadcast that tonight. Yes, you did. Yeah, that's great. It's good news. Like, that's less than 100 kilometers to go. The impacts may look small, but the damage accumulates and is unpredictable. Finding flat ground would be a huge relief. Ground is flattening out. I think I see a gap through, maybe even through to clear ground. Maybe. Oh no, it's just it's just more. Looks like a lot more thick, thick forest. I think I can see a line through though. Almost entirely clear path through. Oh yeah, there's a big clearing. There's a big clearing. I'm picking up the speed a bit. The terrain would indeed flatten out, and up ahead, I had a little time to reflect. This has been probably the most forested route, then the most forested leg that we've had. Like, it's weird because I thought this leg being so short would just be like a nice, easy one. Turns out now it's actually one of the more difficult. Oh, ice lake, big ice lake. Okay. As I made my way over the flat ground and occasional ice lake, I was keeping an eye on those mountains on the horizon. Let's check out the sky. Let's check out how nice that sky looks. It does. And the forest would return suddenly. But fortunately for me, it was a thin sliver at the base of the mountains ahead. Okay, I'm, I'm, there is a mountain ridge that I've got to cross to reach here, but I'm taking a very treeless route through. Wow, look at the colour of those clouds. Holy crap. 
experience told me that the bike was close to destruction, so I was trying to be very careful. And with less than 60 kilometers to go, we were on the home stretch. Mm -hmm. was like, God, the descents are so butt clenchingly tense when you don't have brakes. <laughs> Train went and got real bad again. <laughs> wow. It's not great. <laughs> Southwest from you. <laughs> Roger, yeah, I'm I'm trying to get down to the lowest point I can get to. Uh, only because like cli climbing and descending constantly is uh, like the state the bike's in. It's going to cause some big problems. So if I can get low and stay low, at least then the the speed doesn't pick up like exponentially. Here we go. This looks better. This looks better. I'm only thirty kilometers from you. I completely forgot to do that. Oh yeah, yeah. Ping is great. Yeah, like on, even on the ground, like it helps so much. This past like 200 kilometers, I've, I've seen, we've seen the thickest goddamn forests we've seen on the wall of Microtech, I swear. Oh, okay, we've got some open ground. We've got some open ground here. Yeah. Uh, You're approaching hills. Good work, I know, but good work finding this. This is great. Train the other side of this bank, what's it like? Uh, relatively flat okay. compared to what you've been going across. Okay, yeah. But this jump would turn out to be a mistake. Ooh! Oh, destroyed. <laughs> okay, I did a jump because jumps are a lot faster than the riding. Um, had a quite a bad landing. Bike is not destroyed, but a weapon did fall off. <laughs> One of the okay. guns just came off. Was so it if you come to where I am? Yeah. Um, I'm okay. The flatter area is. Oh yeah, it's green here as well. Oh, there you are. <laughs> We'd see a very quick trip through the green area before heading right back into the snow. It should take up a flat area. Hills on the land on your right hand side if you go past. I have seen. Excellent. Nice and open train now. Speed up there. Okay. I got a hover quad, yeah, six kilometers away. Uh, that would be mine. Wow, look at that, okay. Do six. Leg three, complete. Slow down so I don't crash. <laughs> that was so cool, wow, that was amazing. How how bad would it be to it's like fatally crash like 500 meters away from the destination? That would have been going. She'd been mining 13. I've got to find the repair pad and I've got to try and do it at very low speed. Okay, that's better, that's better, let's try this.
damn, repair bill. This is the highest repair bill I've ever had. This, the bike must be wrecked, right? Because the repair bill is 1,754 credits. That sounds a bit much for a bike. I have a feeling, like I can't confirm this, but I have a feeling that the bike was extremely close to blowing up after that, after that run. So tell me, how did you find your experience of being a support pilot during that? Um, definitely could use a bit more experience. Um, obviously, I'm not as good as I could have been. And I, I didn't even, I didn't even think about pinging the, the, the terrain with the, with the radar ping. Honestly, you shouldn't feel bad about that. Even we, even we on the ground didn't think to do that until like day three of like being in, in, on this thing. Looking at the train from above, a lot of the time it's really hard to kind of spot things from the air. Yeah, but yeah, that's definitely, definitely correct from what I can see. <laughs> So, what we'd expected to be quite an easy stage for the journey, it turned out to be one of the more difficult sections, and we incurred quite the repair bill as a result. The next stage of the trip would be the 655 kilometers from Shubin 13 to Rayari Deltana Research Outpost, and in contrast to this stage, we'll offer up some of the best riding terrain of the whole journey, and we'll see how it went in the next video. As always, I'd like to thank all of you at home for watching, and I want to thank Sphinx40 for tagging along on this one as my support pilot. I think we'll be seeing more of him as the trip progresses. I also want to send out a very special thank you to all of our amazing patrons, who you can see on screen right now. And in this video, I would especially like to thank Rush Davenport, who recently became a patron of the channel. Thank you, Rush, for your very generous support. Patrons like you are what make these videos possible, and I am very grateful for the help. If you are thinking of starting Star Citizen, use the referral code in the description below to gain an extra 5,000 credits when signing up for a new account. We'll be back with more from our junior and microtech very soon.